Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Demetrius here again. Today I'll be discussing my progress update for uh, my lion diet and the carnivore basically. Today I'm presenting from goodcarnivore.com. Yes, the website will be launching soon, so it's going to be great. Let me give you a bit of a progress update as to how far I am. And uh, it's been a while, I haven't made a video in about two weeks because I've been traveling. I've been traveling for work. So let me give you a quick update and then just give you some of the benefits that I've seen even in the last two weeks. They haven't been as dramatic as they've been in the last uh, almost, uh, you know, the 50 days with the 50 pounds and at 50 years old, the, the previous video I did. <laughs> but um, they've been great for me. So that's the point. <clears throat> now, I've been traveling away for two weeks for work. So obviously that's quite challenging because I've had to go to customer locations and <laughs> not in this country, not in the UK, so in the Netherlands. And basically it's been a bit tricky with the food, which is always the case. Every time you travel, it's very, very tricky, very challenging actually to do a, a carnivore diet, let alone the lion diet, which is meat only. And um, I found it very tricky, but the positive news and the great news about this is that I went away for the two weeks. I was doing work in two different locations and I've come back and I have weighed myself and I haven't gained any weight, which is great. I've basically maintained the weight, but roughly lost about uh, one kilogram. So actually on the way, well, I say one kilogram, it's roughly about 700 grams. So it goes up and down every day. And um, I'm now 110 kilograms, so you can work that out in pounds. So it's not brilliant, uh, but you know, going away, working at a different location, having food in hotels and uh, different restaurants. And I had a particularly good time. I went to two really good steakhouses for two of the days that I was there. So I truly enjoyed myself. Even the way they'd prepare the steaks, you know, in some cases they had a uh, bit of a creamy sauce or they had like a pepper sauce or something like that which is fine but i didn't have any carbs so that was a great thing but obviously during the other days that was very very tricky especially because the type of work i do is it's either consulting or it was training so it was two different jobs the consulting one was a little bit easier because i could sort of pre-prepare some of the food and have it with me the training was a bit tricky because I'm there inside a classroom with students teaching them and then when they have lunch and break away for lunch, I'm, you know, I've got to eat with them. So I had to be really cautious in the kind of foods that I have. And uh, that was tough. That was a bit, that was a bit of a tricky situation. However, I had pre-planned, uh, basically I'd cooked steaks uh, prior to that. So before leaving on a Sunday, because I take a Sunday and I drive to the Netherlands. Yes, I don't fly. I'm not interested in flying. And I pre-prepared steaks for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And I uh, had them vacuum packed. So once they're vacuum packed, they can last. It's not a problem. As long as they're cooked well. Well, I, I like to cook mine medium, sometimes rare to medium. And uh, they vacuumed. And once they were vacuumed, they were fine. I had them in a cooler box during the, you know, during the days. So at the end of the day, it was fine having those meals. That was great. And I didn't lose out. The Wednesday, the Thursday and the Friday, the Wednesday and the Thursday I had, um, well, the first week that I was there, I had the two steaks. So I was at the restaurants. So that was good. Everything was great. And the Friday, which I then took and drove from the one side of the Netherlands to the other. So I could go for the training course to deliver a training course. I, uh, what I did was I did a typical South African delicacy, which we have in South Africa, which is something that we've been doing since the days of the Boer War many years ago, where the Dutch, <clears throat> excuse me, where the Dutch would dry cure their meat with salt and uh, uh, herbs and spices and um, well, not necessarily spices, but more of a um, sort of the type of spice that maybe you'd want to use is possibly paprika if you're interested and then Worcester sauce which I wasn't very happy about using because there's a little bit of sugar there but I it was a very small amount so I had no choice but I did pre-prepare I went to a butchery and they had some they had like a kilogram of biltong of dried cured meat for those of you who don't know what it is it's dried cured meat it's a beautiful delicacy and basically once you cure that meat it can last for months uh, it has no problems there, and it, it's very addictive anyway. 
I call it South African cocaine. <laughs> and <laughs> it's uh, it's it's crazy. Now, the um, the good thing is it got me through the Friday, the Saturday and the Sunday, which was great. And that was fantastic. And then on the last week when I was at the training center, I had to sort of watch the food that I was eating and you know stick to the meats i still had some biltong left over so for those of you who don't understand what biltong is if you're in the states if you're in the united states it's very similar to uh, beef jerky the difference is it's a slightly different way of making it and the meat is not so thinly cut okay it's actually much more thicker uh it remains juicier it's not dried to to write down to being really really dry no it's it, it needs to stay and remain a little bit wet and um it's just it's a stunning way of eating meat and um, I had that going for the first two three days and then once again I had another steak in a restaurant and that was fine but I was a bit concerned you know because obviously I was um, unfortunately I had to uh, veer away from the the lion diet for those two weeks slightly and go down to carnivore which is fine it's okay and I and I had a reason for this because uh, last week I reached my 90 days of doing the lion diet and that was my target and then I said to myself yeah I'll drop down to carnivore when I need to specifically when I'm traveling so that I could have you know milk and cheese and yogurt and um, eggs potentially bacon that kind of thing I didn't have any milk um, I had one occasion I had cheese and um, two occasions I had yogurt that was fine and then three of those days when I was at the training center the last week that I was there I had some eggs in the morning which is fine so it didn't really do much for me in terms of change me so when because I came back and I weighed myself last night and yeah I have not gained any weight which is a great thing because obviously I want to maintain the process of of maintaining the weight or losing the weight while I'm traveling because that's the key for me at home it's really easy I can control the entire process but when I'm traveling it's very difficult so this time I, it was for the first time that I managed to be able to do that and I've been traveling back and forward to Europe for the last 25 years you know so it's been um, it's been a nice thing to see that I'm able to do this traveling do all the work but also still maintain what I have and I've never been able to do that never every time I would go away and I would dip into different types of foods like vegetables and this and that I would come back heavier every single week that I was going away and I think that was a real big detriment to my health for many years but now that I've figured out ah the lion diet and the carnivore diet allows me the leeway to still maintain myself while I'm traveling and then occasionally you know drop a little bit so during the, the first week that I was there, I weighed myself at a friend's house on the way to the second week and I had dropped uh, about 700 grams. And then on the way back now, I uh, realized that I just bumped up back up to the 500 grams. So in other words, I gained another 200 grams, obviously, because I had some cheese and yogurt and stuff, which is fine. But overall, the whole week I went away. well, the two weeks, sorry, I went away for two weeks. I did some work and I didn't gain any weight. I basically lost half a kilo, 500 grams, which is a bonus for me it's brilliant absolutely brilliant so that was the main benefit um, the other thing that was truly amazing usually and this has been going on for the last 24 years uh, since I've been in the UK okay well 20 24 25 years since I came to the UK and, and this is the very strange thing I, I lived in South Africa for most of my life and, and the uh, well half of my life and the other half was in Greece at the time before I got to the age of um, 30 so you know, I was, I was growing up in Greece, surrounded by all sorts of, um, you know, flowers and plants and trees. And then back in South Africa from the age of 13 all the way to 28. And I was surrounded by nature, truly incredible nature in South Africa. And I, I never had any um, allergies or any hay fever or anything like that in South Africa. As I landed at the age of 28 in the UK, from that day till last year, I've had hay fever attacks between the months of April, uh, uh, February, March, April, May, and I mean really bad attacks. I would, <laughs> my eyes would blow up, but I'd look like a goldfish. You know, really bad. It was it was hindering my my way of working, and I couldn't understand what it was. And in the UK, I realized. Well, I went to some clinics, and they said to me, "No, you you're allergic to grass." You know, when they're cutting the grass, I was like, "Oh my goodness gracious me!" You know. <laughs> <laughs> I've been surrounded by nature all my life and now all of a sudden I'm allergic to it. Anyway, so for the last 25 years, roughly, I've been suffering from hay fever. 
and in some cases they haven't been very bad years but i've still suffered so i would have to take pills like benadryl and claritin and i would be taking from february all the way till the end of may every day that's just insanity right and on top of that i would have uh, allergy eye drops and i would have nasal sprays i felt terrible for two or three months of the year every single year it used to drive me crazy i used to i used to pray that that I, I would just you know wake up go to sleep and wake up and, and, and go past those three months literally and i would never never wish hay fever or any kind of allergy on any of my enemies if there are any enemies because i don't have any um i would never never even want people to have that because it's such a terrible feeling because i was running nose eyes watering headaches uh, constantly uh, sneezing it was just a ridiculous thing and i've had this major onslaught of hay fever and allergies since i've arrived in the uk and that's 25 years come now to this year when i started the lion diet on the 19th of february okay uh, because of my burn that i had which by the way the burn is really recovering i mean it's it's pretty cool and uh yeah i can't believe even that's working really well now anyway so i started the lion diet and i really only did it so i can recover the burn and you know, from if you look at all my past videos, you know all the benefits I've had so far. And the great weight loss that I've had, which has been strangely, you know, a lot of fun because I didn't even do a stitch of exercise. I noticed something this year. Since February when I started, February 19th, okay, which is usually around when I start getting hay fever, around the end of Feb, well, just before, well, after, after Valentine's Day, usually that's what happens. It just kicks in. And I have been doing the lion diet till this week, right? So it's over 90 days. I haven't had, I, I didn't even think about it. I was so consumed by the lion diet, so consumed about my life feeling so much better. I'm feeling amazing. I'm, I'm able to do things I never used to do. I'm so, I've such clarity. I've lost weight, which is great. I'm having to buy new clothes though. <laughs> which is a bit annoying, but it's fine. Um, and I've, I've, there's so many benefits. I've lost uh, fungus in my body. I've lost you know, the boils that I had in some places. I have uh, lost pain that I've had in my body in different parts and aches that I've had in my body. It's gone. And all those things, all those benefits you can see in my previous videos if you just look at the description. I was so consumed by being so, like feeling so good that I completely forgot that I have been suffering for the last 24 to 25 years, hay fever. Anyway, I came back last night from the Netherlands. And the Netherlands is particularly notorious for me when it comes to hay fever, because when I, when I travel there, I go through forests and I go through farms and there's a huge amount of grass. And I'm always, oh, you know, closing my window, putting on the air con. I've got a specialized allergy, allergy filter in the air con, so it you know, kills that. I kid you not, the, the weirdest thing is, this time, the stupid car, I, my gas stopped on, the, the, the gas that you put inside for air conditioning just failed on me, so basically I had no air conditioning, it's a hot days basically, 27 degrees Celsius, so, so like 83 I think degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere around there, and um, I was just driving from Wales all the way right through to the Netherlands, of course going through a ferry crossing, but all the way right through the Netherlands with all my windows down. Like, you know, the two windows down and literally just letting all the fresh air come in. And I didn't even think, you know, I didn't even think, oh, I'm going to catch hay fever. I was just feeling so great. I was feeling so wonderful. All the way there and then all the way back, two weeks later, which should be really the season of hay fever right now, because it's we, we're at, what, 20th of May, right? I didn't get any hay fever whatsoever. And then I'm thinking back, well, I haven't had anything since February. So there's no way that my body got accustomed to this hay fever 24 years later. I've had it for 24 years and I've tried everything, all sorts of stuff. Even even eating local honey in the local area does does help a bit. Yes, I mean, it does. It makes a difference in hay fever if you have the local honey that's produced in the area. And it's got to be true honey, eh? not this nonsense you buy in supermarkets. Um, it, that helped a lot in many years, but it wasn't, it didn't get rid of hay fever. This time, I've done none of that. I, I, well, because I haven't, I'm on a lion diet, I don't have any sugar, I don't have any sweets, nothing like that. So, no carbs. So it's like, okay, and I only, only realized on the way back of my trip, 
whoa. I, and I was driving and I landed sort of in Dover uh, off to the ferry and I was driving back and it was just a huge amount of trees and you could see the pollen in the air and I had my windows down and I wasn't feeling the pollen. I mean, normally you get a little scratch here and there, close your window down, whatever, but I felt nothing. And I, and then, and then it, 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 it made an impression on me. I was like, wow, okay, I don't have hay fever this year. So I, I literally stopped the car on the side of the road. I actually checked out the weather app just to see if there's any hay fever um, warnings or whatever in the areas. And it's high season, uh, especially, you know, from the distances from Dover all the way back to Wales. And then, of course, in the Netherlands, very high season of, of hay fever. And I was like, OK, well, that's an unusual benefit from being on the lion diet, cross carnivore diet. So I thought I'd make a quick video for you today because, look, it worked for me. I no longer, I guess, because it's end of May already, usually May, June, it's done. I no longer suffer from hay fever and I feel fantastic. I, I in my suitcase, carried Claritin and Benadryl just in case I needed. Didn't use it. I had my nasal sprays, didn't use them. I had my um, eye drops for the allergies, didn't use them. Literally, I'm done. I can now leave those behind because whenever I travel now, I don't care anymore. So it's like, wow. And um, there, there we go. There's another benefit for those of you when it comes to carnivore and, and lion diet. You'd be surprised. Even a very annoying and, and horrible sort of um, yearly annoyance and, and really terrible thing when it comes to hay fever can go away, can actually be cured. Uh, I feel it's being cured because I purposefully opened my windows when I was driving because I had no air conditioning and I was ex and I was accepting all <laughs> all the pollen coming in. I could see it in the air and nothing. Zero. So, yeah, I thought I'd make a quick video just to do a catch up and give you a little bit of a progress update. I'm past the 90 days now and I am absolutely happy and ecstatic that I've reached the 90 day threshold. So I want to say thank you to Kerry from Homestead and Dr. Berry and Dr. Chafee and um, just everyone who I've spoken to online uh, for, for allowing me to find you guys on YouTube and at the same time for getting in touch with you guys and just in general, all the research that I've done, it's it's been an eye opener, you know, and, and, and it's very clearly you know, proof is in the pudding, everyone. You know, you could you could try any kind of diet you like in the world, and I've tried all of them. And you know what? That's what they are. They temporary fad diets. Eating the lion way and the carnivore way is not a diet. It's the way the human body was designed. You know, when you go back and you do your research and you realize that a hundred years ago even less than that, 70 years ago, before the the lies of the studies of the pharmaceutical studies that were brought out to tell the public that, yeah, you need to have a balanced diet and you must have vegetables and this and that, before those lies came out, because all those documents and this, those surveys have been basically debunked, you cannot be accurate with a survey or a study because you can say I could take a thousand people and do a study, but that's not accurate. We have close to nine billion people on this planet. You can't tell me that a thousand people can give you an accurate study. It's absolutely nonsense. And there's no control group either. So you can't have the ability to to have a control mechanism so that you can actually do a study correctly and test out. I mean, they do this kind of thing when they test drugs, when you do trials, right? They have a control group, they have placebo scenarios, they have all of that. Why is that not done by the pharmaceutical industry? Why is that in, not indicated in the studies? You know, to tell people, listen, by the way, you know, this is the way you do this and this is, you know, you should have fruits and vegetables and this is what happens and this is the control study and this is the, the placebo that, that we've put in place for that scenario and so on. Why is that not done? And why were the, the, the lies told to us 70 odd years ago, 60 to 70 odd years ago? Why? Because they want to sell everything to you. That's why when you walk into a supermarket, 99% of the stuff is all just the same thing, just packaged differently. Carbs, 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 sugar, 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 cancer, 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 right? It's terrible. But what they fail to tell us is how to be the way mankind was over a hundred years ago, because a hundred years ago, well, 
there were no illnesses like we have today. All the modern illnesses today, they're exactly what they are. They're modern. We've had more illnesses and diseases in the last hundred years that we've never had in the entire history of mankind going back. Yes, mankind had other problems in the past, you know, and certain medications have allowed mankind to live longer. Fair enough. But that's only to our recollection right now for the last 100 to 200 years, right? What about going back 5,000 years, 10,000 years, 100,000 years, okay? If you go back in history and you really search back and you see how all the skulls and, 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 and bodies and the, the skeletons and everything that's been found, it actually indicates very clearly people were taller, people had bigger bigger heads, right? So obviously different kind of brains, probably different brains. And um, people and mankind essentially only started to develop a brain when they started eating meat. It's a fact. I'm not telling you something nonsense. Go read about it. Go read about it online. If you haven't studied this, you haven't learned this, then there's something wrong with the education system. If you go back and you realize, actually, mankind developed a brain and the eye of mankind developed its capability purely because we started eating meat, because that's the exact time that if we pinpoint, you can, ask, you can ask scientists for this, the scientists that are true to their word, right? They'll tell you, yes, you can pinpoint the exact moment that mankind actually started progressing exponentially. And that is when we started to eat meat. We used to go out and chase our meat. Men used to go out and chase their meat, probably for days on end. And they would stay hungry for days on end, which is, again, your fasting and keto. And they would come back with the meat and then feed the family and feed the village, right? On occasion, the ladies would go out, pick some berries, get some fruits and vegetables if they had any at the time. And that was very minimal. It was almost like a garnish on a table, right? Because mankind knew that they had to survive using meat. And that's a fact. Now, what are we done today? We are destroying and cultivating our lands in the wrong way, just so that we can create vegetables that one, we, we, they want to feed the world. Yes, but really? Seriously, why so many pesticides? Why so many fertilizers? Why so much stuff? Yeah, because you want to protect against animals. You can do a better job. You can do hydroponic growing, right? Which doesn't need any pesticides. It's a growing market, hydroponic growing. I've seen hydroponic farms over here in Wales, and they're phenomenal. You see a tomato that looks like a like a like a like a football, because it's no, it's completely natural. You see a carrot that's designed to be like nice and squiggly because that's the way carrots do come out if they're natural. I should know from my uncle's farm in Greece. Okay, I loved eating vegetables in Greece because I knew they were natural, right? And I never felt terrible eating them. As soon as I travel around the world and I go to different places and other countries, if I was going to like a supermarket, it would be a big problem. You know, markets are different. Your own farm is different if you're not using pesticides. But it's hard because as a farmer, you need pesticides, you need fertilizer. Otherwise, your crops get killed because, because we are no longer putting back the minerals that we need to have inside the soil. We're doing monocropping. We're not rotating crops very, you know, correctly. We are always growing the same things uh, in terms of, you know, keeping the same things on those particular farms, the, the ground and everything. And we're using pesticides and we're using chemicals and all that. And then ultimately, all that goes into the vegetables and the fruits. And then what we do is as humans, we end up eating basically poison. Gone are the days, what my grandparents used to do, and that is grow their own stuff in their gardens and used to be incredible vegetables and, and fruits and stuff for our families. That's why our grandparents are always going to be stronger than us. Always. They died from other illnesses, but not necessarily from uh, being unhealthy. Obesity is something that's happened in the last 50 years. Okay? It's not something that we've had all our lives. You know, if you go back and even look at photographs, because I'm a photographer and I see photographs from the past, you would hardly ever see someone fat as an overweight. Yes, you've got to be blunt about it. I was seriously fat. I was overweight because, and it wasn't because I wasn't looking after myself. No, I would go to gym. I would eat my three meals a day, my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner. I would have, you know, the standard portion, vegetables, carbs, and uh, protein. You know, I would have more vegetables and and, and then be, when I really got to a bad stage before I had my my start to the lion diet, I was piling on the vegetables. I would have like, you know, 90% of the vegetables and I was getting sicker and more sick and more sick. It was terrible. And I was like, what's going on here? I'm trying to get healthier and I'm not getting anywhere. And, and luckily, luckily, I came across all these wonderful videos 
uh, on YouTube, especially with Kerry and Homestead and everybody else, Dr. Berry and Dr. Chafee, that opened my eyes. And I said to myself, you know, I'm South African. I've grown up with meat. I used to love my meat. Why should I do anything else? Let me see if this works. And I've done it and absolutely. And not only have I had all these other benefits I've told you in the last how many videos that I've made on my channel, which <laughs> my channel is supposed to be tech and media, but all of a sudden now, you know, I've had, I've got this epiphany and this change in my life of health. And I'm adding that to my channel, which I'm hoping that's going to just, you know, you, you need to be a holistic person, right? Everything you do at home, every do everything you do at work, and then everything around you in life. That's the idea of my channel. So now that I've added this to the channel, because I'm, I'm getting healthier, uh, I, I feel amazing. And at the same time, look, now I've been away for two weeks. I've been able to maintain my weight and get a little bit lower as well, just bonus. And at the end of the day as well, I no longer have hay fever. I mean, it's just, this is remarkable. I feel completely and utterly grateful and blessed. I really do. So thank you to everyone. Thank you for listening and watching. I know it was a long video, but uh, my videos are either <laughs> either a, a progress update or even a rant. Um, as you can see, I'm not scripting any of this. I'm talking as per, you know, as you see me, I haven't even edited or cut this video. I don't need to because I am 100% positive about everything that I'm saying because I'm going through it and I'm proof is in the pudding. Yes, I've, I've <laughs> shaved my mustache and my goatee basically just because I want to uh, do some different styles but the point is I feel incredible and now another bonus hey no longer hay fever so for those of you who are hay fever sufferers and I know there's many of you I tell you I know how you feel I've suffered for 24 years and by the way this year it's gone and I 100% 110% attribute that to the fact that I'm on a 100% strict carnivore if not lion diet and i definitely know that's the case because it's just the only thing that i've made a change in the last 24 years and that is being on this carnivore and that alone shows me that because i've tried everything else as uh, you know medications and that for the last how many years 24 years in terms of hay fever and that and yeah i got some relief but it was only temporary it was just covering the problem it was just covering the problem, which that's what medication does, right? It covers the problem, but it doesn't solve the cure. It doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't cure it. Well, guess what? The the old adage of, you know what? You are what you eat. My goodness gracious me, is that right? But it depends on what you eat. That's how they should phrase that particular uh, phrase. You are what you eat, but it depends what you eat. Absolutely. And my new motto, apart from the good carnivore stuff, is um, my little t-shirt over here, it says, don't, I know you can't see because of the microphone, it says, don't say it, do it. That's my new motto. Don't say it, do it. And, you know, this motto is going to be my life's purpose now because I'm no longer going to say just things. It's down to proving everything. I've been doing this for many years in terms of being a technology person, being a media person, and uh, trying to get as healthy as I could. You know, when I was really young, in the ages of 18 all the way to 25, I was a Latin American dance champion in South Africa. I've done, I was seriously fit. I had my eight pack and everything, you know, I was quite well off in terms of health and um, I want it back. I want to get back what I had. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, right? Me looking like a 19th of February when I first started this lion diet, I looked like the marshmallow man in Ghostbusters. <laughs> and now I'm, yeah, I'm much happier. I'm not a marshmallow man, but you know, I got a long way to go. I've got another, maybe another 25 kilograms to go, but it's fine. I'm in no rush. The fact that I'm getting all these benefits along the way is brilliant. I love it. But you know, just because you're scared of doing this or you, you you're apprehensive or you're not sure if you can do it there's so many people i speak to and they say oh i'm not sure if i can do this i don't think i can cut, cut the carbs out that's all i've been hearing this whole week from the people the customers i go and visit and the, and the students but then when i show them the results and i show them what was a what before and what i am later they're like okay proofs in the pudding no longer doing it uh, and, sorry no longer saying it doing it so i have done the 90 days 
So I've said I was going to do it and I did it and I feel fantastic. I will probably do this week a fast. Five days, I'm not even hungry today. And I will try it just to get myself a little bit of a boost again. Just get rid of some of the, you know, some of the extra little one or two, I wouldn't say carbs, but, you know, some of the herbs and spices and stuff that I've had and maybe the cheese and the yogurt and the stuff that I've had this last week. And I just want to bump it up a little bit. So I'll probably fast for like three days or five days. Let's see what happens. But more importantly, I just wanted to give you a progress update after the 90 days and tell you, hey, Apart from not gaining any more weight when I travel, once again, I'll repeat this, I've lost the hay fever and I never got it. And I had my windows rolled down driving from here all the way to the Netherlands, which is a 12 hour trip. Which, by the way, even if I had to take an airplane would take longer because of the way that location is. So, hell, I just took my car, drove, turned the windows down, pumped up the music and started driving. And I completely and utterly forgot that I was suffering from hay fever all these years. And actually, I didn't even realize until I drove back. And then I, and I, and I landed in the UK. And, and when I, on the way back, I was like, you know, this is kind of weird. Eh? I haven't had a hay fever attack. And then I looked at the date again because I, I get I get lost with dates because um, I'm always busy. 20th of May. And I'm like, huh. OK, I haven't had a hay fever attack so far. What's changed? So I thought, nah, maybe it's not a good year for hay fever. So I checked it up on the weather app. I stopped the car and I was like, okay, let's check what's happening. No, it's intense hay fever everywhere here. Netherlands. I'm like, okay, thank you very much. Lion diet. Thank you very much. Carnivore diet. And then on the way back, <laughs> while I was from Dover all the way back to Wales, which is around a four hour trip. Every time I'd see a cow on the road, oh, oh, oh not on the road, in farms. I'll say, hey, cow, thank you for being there for me. I love you lots. You're my next food. Excellent. I was just talking to cows while I'm driving. So <laughs> that sounds stupid, I know. But when you're happy that you achieve results, you really are, you know, you, you start, I wouldn't say getting delirious, but you start improving in your life and uh, you start to feel great about everything and you're just happy about more things. So long story short, great improvements I'm very happy 90 days is done i'm gonna go for another 90 days i'll see how far i can go my target is on the 27th of october this year that's my birthday i'm gonna turn 51 i want to try and have as close the results as i can to what i was when i was 21 so at the age of 51 i'm gonna try and have results that i had when i was 21 it's a tall order but you know what doesn't matter. I'm going for it slowly. It's going to get there at some point. But more importantly, I'm just fascinated that I've had benefit after benefit after benefit, excluding the fat loss, excluding the weight loss. Benefit after benefit after benefit. Now, the one thing I didn't do is work out this week. I didn't go to the gym. I missed out that on those two day, two weeks that I was away. It was very difficult to do stuff at the hotel. Um, I did a couple of things when I was there, push-ups and that, but that's not the same thing. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to try and do some workouts this week and sort of balance out. Otherwise, thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. I know it was a long video. Much appreciated. And uh, this is Demetrius here again, this time from goodcarnivore.com. And the website is coming out soon, I promise. And signing out.